In this brief demo, we will work with LabVIEW and the Digital Filter Design Toolkit to design a digital filter and then save, those, save the result of the design, a set of coefficients, off to a text file. Let's start by opening a blank VI. On our VI, we'll move over to the block diagram, which is the graphical code, and we'll locate the Digital Filter Design Toolkit palette. From the Digital Filter Design Toolkit palette, we'll choose the Filter Design subpalette and drop an Express VI for classical filter design. This Express VI offers a configuration-based interface with interactive controls and indicators that update as you make the changes to the parameters. And uh, on this interface, we were able to select the filter type, low pass, high pass, band pass, uh, band stop, as well as the parameters associated with the filter. For instance, the uh, sampling frequency, the pass band edge frequency, uh, the passband ripple, stop band edge frequency, and the stop band attenuation. For this filter, we're going to design a low pass filter with a uh, passband edge frequency of 200 hertz and a stop band edge frequency of 400 hertz. And uh, notice that as I change the parameters, you can see here the magnitude response graph updates to reflect those changes. I can enter the parameters that I want to work with uh, using numbers on the left hand side here, as I've done, or I can uh, move the cursors on the graph here to change the parameters uh, graphically. So I'm able to adjust the ripple, for instance, and the uh, uh, pass band edge frequency and the stop band edge frequency. Also notice that as I update my design, the poles and zeros associated with the design are updated on the um, top half of the z-plane plot here. The zeros marked off as the little red circles and the poles marked off as the uh, blue X's. Uh, so I've changed a few parameters. I've um, settled on a filter design let's say I want to choose a different design method. I've got several available here for me. I can choose uh, Butterworth, um, Inverse Chebyshev, uh, or Equal Ripple FIR, often known as the uh, Remez Exchange um, method of filter design. And uh, let's go ahead and use the Equal Ripple FIR for a FIR type filter. And you notice that um, as I was choosing the filter design too, the uh, design results were updating. And um, you can see the position of all the zeros on the pole zero plot, the upper hand uh, Z plane, as well as the uh, required filter order. Um, again, as I make a change, you'll see the filter order change as well as the position of the uh, zeros in this case. So when I click OK here, my uh, dialog box closes, and now I have an icon that represents my uh, designed filter. And the designed filter is actually available as a wire that I can run from this output filter out. Uh, I'm now basically ready to work with my uh, design. So there are a number of different things I could possibly do with my design. And uh, for instance, I could apply some further analysis, or I could convert the design to a fixed point implementation and then uh, continue with the design for a fixed point implementation. I could also apply my design. For instance, I could apply it to a test signal. In this demo, what I'm going to do is basically export my design as a text file. So to do that, I can work with um, one of the other tools available in the Digital Field Design Toolkit, available from the Utilities subpalette here. In the utility subpalette, there is a uh, DFD saved text file um, icon, which I'll drop a copy of that down. Hold it close to my icon for my uh, filter design here, the Equal FIR low pass filter design. And notice there's some wires have automatically appeared. And these wires basically, when I run my, when I run my LabVIEW application to actually perform the design, these wires will actually uh, represent the filter design and um, basically tell, tell the LabVIEW application to pass the filter design that I've created here over to this uh, second VI here, which is going to uh, save that design off to a text file. So uh, with this in place, I can go ahead and, and run my VI to go ahead and, and uh, implement the design. Notice that when I do, I get a um, select file path uh, dialog box here, where I can um, go ahead and uh, choose a file name for my exported filter coefficients. I'll go ahead and save these in my, my documents folder for uh, my test filter, and this will save the uh, design off as an XML file that I can uh, later load up using a uh, text editor. So I've just saved my filter coefficients off to a text file. Let me go ahead and open up a text editor and load those coefficients up into this text editor to see what the, uh, the resulting file looked like. I'll go ahead and choose open in this freeware text editor called um, uh, Site open up the My Documents folder where I had saved my test filter.xml and load it up. And um, you can see here that LabVIEW has 
automatically created for me a uh, XML file that has all of my um, information about my filter. For instance, the order here is t uh, order 22. My structure is, is referenced here, as well as the FIR coefficients, and these are the numbers that are actually designed. Uh, and with this particular um, freeware text editor, I'm able to collapse and open the different sections of my XML file. So you can see that lower down in the or further down in the file, I have my zero pole and gain. Um, the locations of the um, of the uh, zeros in this case are, are listed out here, as well as the, uh, the desired gain. So um, once I have these coefficients, you can imagine the, the sky's the limit for the design. I could cut and paste these into my source code for um, for actually implementing a filter, or I could uh, uh, plug these into um, other applications for actual application. Of course, Labby has a number of, of alternatives for apply, actually applying the filter, including code generation. This is just one of these alternatives.